What's up traders? My name is Austin Silver. You're going to love what you see in today's video. But if you are not trading Forex and you're looking to maybe transition from Forex into futures, like I did about a year ago, I've got two new courses for you that are newer, beefier, more valuable, and are going to make you more profitable. So if you want to check those out, there's a link in the description. Join us on ASFX TV. You get access to our live streams every day, our Discord, and of course, the two new courses, Futures 101 and Futures 2.0. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Enjoy the Forex course, and hopefully we'll see you on ASFX TV very soon. What's up, traders? Welcome to the Advanced Divergence Training Course. For those of you who are new, my name is Austin Silver. I appreciate you being here, and I want to welcome you for the first time to the ASFX family. I want you to understand that I genuinely mean it when I say I appreciate your attention, I appreciate your business, and I want to do everything that I can to make sure that you find success with the information here that we're going to go over in this course. So, before we get into it, Please take down my contact information. You see it in front of you. If you need anything when we're finished this course here today, when you finish watching these videos, if there's anything that you need, please reach out to me. I am here to make sure that you find success with the information in this course. I can't stress that enough. So if there's any questions, if there's anything that's unclear, if there's a language barrier issue, whatever it is, please reach out to me because I want to make sure you grasp this and apply it directly into your trading to start making an impact today. So I want to preface the whole course by reminding you how I think I teach best, which is through trade markups, through showing you how we should and should not react in the live market on actual charts. But before we can get into all those charts, the hundreds of charts that I've put in this course for you, I have to lay the groundwork with some text explanations so you can see the words first before we get to the charts. The game plan for today is going to be pretty simple. First, we're going to review the A1 entry system. Now, this is not a beginner's course. I can't stress that enough. But we are going to touch on a couple of the topics and go over a few of the recent A1 trades to lay that bread and butter foundation one more time. We just want to go over it so we're making sure that we speak the same language going forward into the rest of the course. But after we go over the A1 very quickly here, we're going to go deeper down the rabbit hole. We're going to define the D1 and D2 entry systems, and we're going to learn how to use divergence to find profitable trade setups. This is different than the A1 system, and that's why I have to stress it, that you need to finish the beginner course before going through what we're about to talk about here today. This is not basics. This is advanced. So without the basics being fully grasped, you're going to struggle. So I want to make sure you have that. If you need the beginner course, please reach out to me. I will hook you up on whatever you need to to make sure we get you that content. The agenda for today, we're going to quickly very quickly, warm up here in a few minutes with a refresher of the A1 system. I'm actually going to show you a few of the recent trades that I took using the A1 system. But quickly, again, I'm stressing the quick because we're not going to be touching on basics. We're going to quickly move into defining and identifying divergence because before we can use divergence to spot entry and exit systems, entry and exit signals, we want to make sure that we understand divergence, not only how to draw it, but what is it telling us? Where do I look for it? What does it actually mean? That's what we need to grasp first before we can really, like I said, dive down that rabbit hole and go at the D1 and D2 entry systems. But we are going to get there in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. That's where the meat of this is. I want you to understand that all of this, building into Chapter 3 and Chapter 4, is giving you the grounds to understand how to identify the repeatable patterns that are in these two entry systems. You're going to want to use those patterns and know all of their nuances to help you create profitable risk-reward opportunities in your trading. So again, we're focused on identifying the patterns that I'm going to show you here in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 especially, and all of the nuances that we're going to talk about beforehand and during those examples. All of that is to help you identify profitable risk-reward opportunities using divergence. But why divergence, some of you will ask. Well, first, this is going to take your trading to a new level of understanding because you're adding something to your tool belt, to your entry signal tool belt. Literally, as I'm filming this in front of me, I have the playbook by Mike Bellafiore. You guys know I'm a big believer in what Mike preaches. The playbook is your Exactly that, your playbook of entry signals that you know work for you. You know they make you money over the long run. And now those are the trades that you want to trade, right? We all have our playbooks, especially if you're watching this course, I'd hope you do. This system that you're going to learn here today, the D1 and D2, this is another tool, another entry system to add to your tool belt. The A1s, they were our breakouts, 100%. These D1s and D2s you're going to learn here today, these are our pullback entry signals, and they're just as powerful, if not more powerful. Of course, I'm going to always say, oh, the newest thing is the best, but when you see some of these trade setups, guys, 
the risk reward opportunities are unreal on some of them, especially when I show you how to use the higher time frames and back yourself down to finding a trending move earlier in the week that you could hold for days. And those are going to be the huge trades that I know you want to take advantage of. This course, this idea, this system comes from us consistently only using the A1 system and seeing that we were missing moves. If you go back three or four years ago with the A1, we were finding that we would have trending pairs that just wouldn't present that perfect A1 entry signal to get me involved. But we knew the direction. We knew where it would probably go by the end of the day. And I always say probably, but we knew where it would probably move. And more often we were right. So we figured what were we missing? And all we needed to do was test and refine down to see what is it telling us? What is the chart telling us that we can react to? And we found that divergence was a really powerful signal to show you when pullbacks were done and the trending move is ready to kick back in. You're going to learn exactly how to identify that in chapters two, three, and four. So now let's get into the A1 system. I want to talk about just a few terms here before we jump into some markups of the recent trades. If you're watching this and you're going forward with us, you should understand number one, what a shift candle is, the SC abbreviation. You should understand two and three candle formations. You should very clearly understand EMAs, exponential moving averages, and you should understand how to use a TDI, the Trader's Dynamic Index. But if you don't understand how to use those, I want to quickly just give you a little refresher here. This is something you can screenshot, save it, put it up above your desk, whatever you need to remember the EMAs if you struggle with this. But at this point, again, I'm maybe I'm being kind of tough or an asshole, whatever. You should know this by now. You should know what the 800 is, the 200 is, the 50 is. You should even know that the 50 EMA here on the 15 minute is the same thing as the 1 minute 800 EMA. You should know how the EMAs change over between time frames. And if you don't, that's something that, again, we go over in the beginner course. So you want to make sure you understand that before we attack the information here today. Again, just a quick refresher of the TDI. You know it's three main components. That RSI, which is the green line. The yellow line, which is the market sentiment, the liquid 50, right? And our red trend line. Those are the three components of the TDI. But you can't forget overbought and oversold, two powerful indicators on the TDI as well. And then of course, the stationary 50 value right down the middle. So going forward, we're not going to touch on the components of the TDI. I'm not going to take time to explain them. If you need clarification, again, it's in the beginner course or email me. I will be more than happy to clarify for you, but we're going to keep this moving here. So now let's review the A1 checklist. Number one, the first thing that I'm asking myself when I'm looking for a potential trade, whether it be A1 or D1 or any of my systems, the most important thing for me, because I like to trade in trend, that's where I make most of my money. The most important thing is what is the value of the liquid 50? I'm asking myself, is it in the buy zone? Is it in the sell zone? Or is it swapping between the two? The next thing, if I can find a clean trending liquid 50, maybe it's in the buy zone all day. The next thing that I'm going to look at on that pair is what are the direction of the EMAs? Are they in a full trend? Are they counter trend? Are they coming towards the 800? We have a funny term from the Philly seminar. Are they spaghetti? Do they not make any sense? Do they all just look all over the place? This is the second most important question to ask yourself on the A1 checklist. The third, fourth, and fifth most important questions right down the line here. What is the Asian range telling us? Is it blown out? Or is it broken? Two important questions, right? Those USD pairs, we want those Asian ranges within 50 pips. If they're more than 50, you might want to not trade that thing today. Cross pairs, GBP, NZD, if its box is more than 75, 80 pips, I'm probably not trading it. If we're trading with inside the range, that's something else that you should note on your checklist as well because you don't want to get caught up in a choppy trade. Showing that it hasn't broken that Asian range, we know that that means what? that it's probably not going to break the range. And even if it does, it might still chop. So you need to understand how to use the Asian range for that A1 system. And that should be clear to you at this point. This is just a refresher. The next question you want to ask, and that's kind of getting us into today, is there divergence in our way? On top of that, you want to say, what is ADR telling us? What does the average day tell us? Do we have space to find a profitable risk reward setup? And for me, like I said here, I like at least 2R on the potential for my setups. Past this, we want to go a little deeper. If all of the parameters are being met for the A1 trade, we want to take it deeper. Is the entry candle off a solid EMA? Remember, we don't want to enter off the 8 EMA. That's our buffer to avoid the late entries. You also, at that point, if you're looking at where's the entry candle coming off of, you want to look, are we breaking for a new high of day or a new low of day if you're buying or selling, right? At that point, if you got EMAs in trend, you got the L50 in trend, you got space on ADR, you got no divergence, then you want to go with the smaller parameters. Are we overbought or oversold yet? And on top of that, the final thing that you want to make sure of before you get into the trade is are we entering on a valid formation with proper TDI value? So yeah, the candle formation might be right, 
But if the TDI isn't set up correctly, if the RSI isn't above the L50 or below the L50 in the proper zone, then we know that setup might not be correct. Now let's talk about exit signals because this is always an area that I think traders struggle with. The first one that we can't overlook is always going to be take profit reached. For me, that's been my biggest thing in 2019 and I'm going to push that forward into 2020. Take profit reached is a great exit signal. If I'm measuring this risk at eight pips and I know I can get 16 out of it and I get smashed at 16 and it goes 32, you can't be mad at the rest of those pips that you left on the table. You had a risk reward set up, you measured your trade, you made your trade, you hit your profit. That is the best exit signal. Too often, I feel like, especially guys that are getting confident with our system, they end up moving their take profit, trying to take this thing for more. Oh, it might go past ADR. Oh, it might ignore this divergence. It might but it also might not. And if you want to be consistent in this game, if you want to last as long as I've managed to last, if you want to make this your business and you want to make consistent money doing this, take profit reached has been my savior. If you can find risk reward, risk five to get 10, give me that. I'm taking that every time. You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you're not forgetting that take profit reached is a great exit signal. If you're in a trade, it's moving up for you and all of a sudden it turns down, the break of the eight EMA is going to be your safest exit point. But a lot of time, you're going to leave money on the table if you get out on a break of the 8 EMA because it might hold the 21 and continue higher or lower depending on which way you're trading. It might continue in the direction you're trading after just testing the 21. So for me, my next exit signal, if I don't have take profit reached, is a break of the 21 with a strong bar or two smaller bars. Meaning, if it bodies through the 21 really hard, pushing through the 21 with good distance, where it couldn't give me a two or three candle formation off the 21 coming back in trend, I'm going to pull it. But if it breaks with just a small little bar and I'm like, yo, this could be a, you know, just slowing on the 21, could be a two or three candle formation. We could see this thing move up. I'm going to try to hold that trade sometimes, especially if higher time frames are telling me to stay in trend. Another exit signal, for, especially again, when you're talking about take profit reached, if I buy something and it's not overbought yet and it hits overbought when I'm in the trade, I might want to start taking profits there. Absolutely. Because you know that it could pull back off that level of being overbought. And the last exit signal that you can never forget is high impact news. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about news here, but understand that if you have high impact news coming, as we talked about a lot in the beginner course, you want to make sure you're out of the way. If you're trading, you know, the dollar into FOMC news, you're going to get chopped around. Things are going to go crazy. Your spread might jump. It's not worth the risk. So make sure you're reading Forex Factory. Make sure you're reading the economic news to understand when is Trump speaking? When is Chairman Powell going on? When are these things happening? It's easy. High impact news is just so easy to avoid. So it's a great exit signal. If you're in a trade and news is coming, take that trade. Now, this is a slide that I ripped right off the seminar because it was a great example. Everybody found value in it and I didn't want to change it. I think it just holds a really clear message. So let's talk about closing the trade early. Now, this is different than if take profit gets reached. This get, is different if you pull the trade, right? Closing the trade early. It breaks the eight EMA. What do you do? Well, if you take 50% off, let's say at one R, you risk five, you're up five pips. Do you take 50% off there? Let's run through a scenario to see what the best outcome should be. If we're risking one lot, and that's going to be 1% of our account at 10 pips with potential reward 2%, which would be 20 pips, closing at 50% at 10 pips at that 1R value gives you a 0.5% profit. You then have 0.5 lots still running. So what happens to this second half? Now, you didn't get a full percent gain on it. You didn't get the full 1R because you only closed half of the trade. So if I get stopped now with the other half still running, no profit, no loss, the trade is a wash. Not a great outcome, especially over the long run. You'll lose money in that situation. So you don't want to do that. If I move the stop to break even and the remaining half of the trade gets stopped, then I would only make 0.5R. And that, again, is not ideal for the long run. So the point being, what was my first thing when I said about exit signals? Take profit. See your trades through. Be picky enough. At this point, if you're watching an advanced course, you should be picky enough that you're not taking a bunch of trades every day. You should be picky enough to aim for good risk reward in the most probable setup that you can find. And at that point, see the trade out. Because if you're being that picky over the long run and you stay that picky, you're going to make more money than lose money because you're seeing the trades through, not because you're closing at certain points. However, it's important to understand that I will move the stop loss once I go over 2R. If I'm up 20 pips and I only risk 10, I'm locking that trade and I'm probably taking some off at 2R too. See, as I say here, you should have 50% off. Now, if it holds the 8 and the 21, I want to manage that trade by moving my stop into profit as the trade continues to move in the direction I want it to move. That way, if it turns around, I'm still getting stopped at a higher price than just break even. And I'm still pulling more than that 0.5R off the trade. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, please, please make it clear or please reach out to me. I'm sorry. Now, 
at 1R, I am going to close a piece of the trade, 25 to 50 pips. But if it's a better setup, if it's an A setup in trend, I am going to leave some of that trade on 75%. And I'm going to go for the 2R. If it's not a great setup, EMAs could be better. Maybe it's a B or a C setup when you grade it using your parameters of the A1 system. I'm going to take 50% of that trade at 1R. And I'm going to possibly even lock the stop at that point too because I don't want to lose any money on a crappy setup. I want to make sure I'm pulling profits. But if it's a great setup, I might have to give it more time to go into some consolidation in, in my favor before then moving even more into my favor. And you got to keep that in mind. And we're going to talk about that a lot, using the higher time frames to keep that bias even through consolidation to hold you into trades that could move for multiple days but in terms of the a1 again i don't want to go too deep on the a1 that's what the beginner course is for and all these exit signals and all these exit strategies are detailed in the beginner course you know that but understand if it's an a setup i'm taking it to at least 2r before i move my stop at 2r i'm taking some off if it's not an a setup i'm taking some off at 1r and i'm maybe at that point, locking the stop if it's a B or C setup. But if it's a good setup, I'm trying to leave some in and I'm going to try to move the stop into profit as the trade continues to move. Now, let's talk about the highest probability trades for the A1 system. Of course, trending trades are always going to be more probable. That means perfect L50, perfect EMAs, not overbought or oversold, no divergence in the way, no sp and space on ADR. That is going to be your A plus setup. If you find anything less than that, you should be using the risk profile that you built for yourself to grade that trade and size down appropriately. Let's say, for example, you don't have a perfect liquid 50, but everything else is great. You might want to call it a B setup. And instead of putting 3%, just take it at 1%. Win, you're going to make 2%. Great. It's a great trade. Lose, you're going to be a lot happier that you didn't hit it as an A setup because you followed your risk profile. You followed your rules. So now that we reviewed the A1 system, I want to take that and apply it to some of the recent trades, walk you through here my thought process on why I took these trades, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and how I managed them throughout. So the first trade we're going to take a look at, this is Euro JPY on the 15-minute chart. This is a trade that we're actually going to come back to in the divergence chapters, in chapter three, specifically when we talk about D1 entries, because you're going to see there, how we can use the D1 and the A1 to find multiple entries on one pair if it's a trending pair throughout the day. But for now, let's just discuss, turn the pointer on, let's just discuss this shift candle right here. So you can see the open price of this candle off the 50 EMA, 8 and 21 EMAs are crossing. That's a great shift candle right there for us with a perfect liquid 50 in the buy zone all day today. Now, no divergence on top, as you can see the RSI high here from the previous day does not come higher price action does not come higher today, which creates a descending trend line on both. So no divergence there. The only thing about this is the dropping liquid 50 and that it was still inside the Asian range. Because if we were to draw our box from pin high to pin low here, you can see it tested the Asia session high here twice and the Asian session low here once. So trading within that range, you could be trading a choppy pair if you take a position. However, if you put that aside and say, okay, we are inside the Asian range. We do have a dropping liquid 50, but everything else is perfect. You could grade this a B setup, put your stop at the entry candle open price about eight or nine pips away. And within about five hours from 445 to about 9 a.m., you get over three R, almost three and a half R on this trade. Look at how once you took the position, it breaks for a new high of day very quickly, pins back, retest that high of day before pulling back off. It's showing a lot of strength. And then even here, two candles with a pin here. So three times, it kind of retests that high a day breakout which is the same as the pin from the previous day high. So if you're using all the significant levels that we know how from the beginner course, you can easily see this as a breakout, retest, hold the 8 EMA, hold yesterday's high, and then a move higher. So this was a clean trade. If you took it once you were in, and um, excuse me, if you took it once you were in, it was a clean trade and it held the 8 EMA really well. But what I liked about this trade a lot was the hooking trend line here. See how this red trend line on the TDI was well underneath the RSI? I love that. So when the RSI breaks through the L50, you know you're in the proper buying position. Not overbought, perfect L50. Like I said, the only things that could be better about this was the L50 could be more flat, less dropping into reset, dropping towards that station 50. And also it could be outside the Asian range. But still, you can read risk reward here. You know that's a shift candle. You know the stop goes at the entry candle open. And you can read that risk reward and take it as a B setup. The next trade we're going to talk about is GBPNZD. So this is a B setup. This is another shift candle here, right there, off the 50, off the 21. This is also inside the Asian range. You can see very, very choppy the whole day beforehand. 
but this ends up falling over 6R. It only breaks the 8 EMA and tests the 21 once, and then it never breaks, except right here it breaks for a second again, never breaks the 8 to a point where it would be substantial enough to say, oh, let me get out of this trade. So look at the liquid 50 here in the sell zone, right? Trend line again, same as that previous trade, hooking well in, you know, into a good position for the RSI to then pull through the liquid 50. The only thing about this that you have to take note of is there was divergence the previous day, which when you draw divergence like this, so we have falling price action, I know you can't see it, but it's a rising RSI slightly. That creates this zone here at the bottom as a significant level. So you would also be trading this towards that significant level of the previous day's low, which was pinned once here and pinned once here, once in Asia, once in London. So to be trading towards that, I could not give this an A setup. To be trading inside the Asian range, I could not give this an A setup. So with a perfect liquid 50, with EMAs clearly in a downtrend like this, you know you're short, short biased. However, reading it as a shift candle, reading it for everything that it is, this is not an A plus shift candle. This is a B setup inside the Asian range with nice L50 and divergence on the bottom. The risk reward is measurable. It was a 20 pip stop and it falls 127 pips. So understand it as an A1 signal with this shift candle here off the 21, off the 50 pretty close to as well. The best thing about this trade, in my opinion, is the liquid 50. When you see a perfect liquid 50 like this matched with perfect EMAs, I'm looking to find shorts on this all day long. And part of what we're going to learn in the divergence section of this course when we get into the next three chapters, you're going to see how we could be looking in here for divergence entries. We're going to get to that in a little bit. So let's talk about another setup here. This is GBP JPY. Now this is a C setup and I didn't trade this. Ryan, some of the guys in our VIP were looking at this the other day and I told them just let it go. It's not worth it. Why did I say that? Well, first you can see Asia high to Asia low. We are inside the Asian range. You can see that on my notes. You also have clear divergence from the previous day. Rising RSI, falling price action. Now, if you don't know how I drew those purple lines, we're going to get into that in the next chapter, but that is divergence on the bottom, which tells us that it might be rising today. Now, it's a perfect L50, perfect EMA, so that's telling you it could be falling today, so you don't have confluence. That's what prevents it from being an A setup. Now, you could look at this as a two candle formation that I have boxed off, or you could look at it as a full five candle. I have it marked off as a five candle because that's where the consolidation starts. I wanted to mark it from there to see the push off the 21 that could induce you to take a position. But as you can see, it would stop you out for about an 18, maybe 15 pip loss, whatever it is. But this type of setup should be avoided, in my opinion, inside the Asian range with divergence on the bottom, with a rising liquid 50, if anything. And it's very, very choppy. You can see all of the pins. So when you add all that up inside the Asian range, rising liquid 50 and divergence, it's enough things for me to just say, I'll find a better trade. I wouldn't be involved in this. Even if it fell, that's great. I would still go look for a better trade. Now, let's get into the next example. This is NZD CHF. Again, first thing we're going to look at is the liquid 50. So you see it tells us short bias today. You're trading in this situation towards the 800 EMA. You see that going flat across the screen. The shorter term EMAs, the 200 and the 50, were above the 800, but because the liquid 50 is in the sell zone, that tells you to sell it towards the 800 as your first take profit. But this three candle formation is inside the Asian range, which is why I gave it a B setup. And because it's counter trend, those two things are what made me give it a B setup. But this three candle pushes off the 21 and off the 50 really nicely towards that 800 EMA. It then ends up bodying the 800, pulling back and retesting it, and then falling away from it all day, almost 5R. Now, this is NZD CHF, so you're going to get a tighter stop because it's a CHF pair. That's why the stop here is only eight pips. And I would probably avoid this trade because it's a CHF pair inside the Asian range and counter trend. For me, it's a B setup, but you could definitely find something better because there's also the possibility that it hits the 800 and bounces off of it because it's not in a full downtrend. The better situation here would be if the 800 EMA was above. So when you're looking at setups like this where the TDI tells you to sell it to the 800, you know that 800 is first idea of take profit. Here, look at the space to the 800 there. It wasn't even 10 pips. So it wasn't even good risk reward if it was to only make it to the 800. So that's why I didn't take this trade. But you still want to be able to identify that as a three candle formation with a nice liquid 50 with a nice TDI cross. Look how the RSI is under the trend line under the liquid 50. It's not oversold. There's no divergence on the bottom. So it's clearly short biased. It just could have been better. The EMAs could have been better. The uh, price action could have been outside the Asian range, which could have been better. And the risk reward to the 800 EMA could have been much better as well. Another setup here, GBP JPY. Now this is a weaker three candle formation. This ends up still falling 
in that direction as well. Notice first L50 says to sell it to the 800 EMA, right? Because the 50 and the 21, or excuse me, the 50 and the 200 up here are coming down towards that 800 EMA. The L50 tells us to sell to the 800 EMA. Now it is oversold. That's another knock on it. And the three candle formation doesn't break with a right leg lower than the consolidation start point. So to me, this was a C setup. But as you can see, it gets shoved to the 800, kind of sits there for a little bit, breaks, retests, and then moves even lower off of it. So a really big move, 7R, 23 pip stop, it goes 172. And it hits oversold twice and still falls lower. So just a huge, huge drop here on GBPJPY on a C setup. So for me, the point of putting this in here is I want to emphasize you don't need to feel FOMO when this happens. It's a bad three candle formation. It could have been better on the EMAs. It could have been better on the TDI. It didn't need to be oversold. A couple of things could be better here, which would say go find something else. So don't let this type of move make you feel like you missed something. Don't let FOMO kick in. It's not worth it. So here, another three candle formation that gives us a C setup. Now this is CAD CHF, so another slower pair with the Swiss franc being attached. But you see, looking at the liquid 50 from start of day, it is a swapping liquid 50. Here's the start of day line. It starts in the sell zone and then moves into the buy zone. So that creates the long bias. The EMA is kind of coming into an uptrend as price pulls higher. It breaks for a new high of day off the 21 EMA, off the 50 with pins to the 800. So you would think that that could be a significant breakout. It breaks past yesterday's body high. So you're like, okay, we might see more bullish movement here. Look at the RSI above the trend line, above the liquid 50 in the buy zone. You're long biased there on this three candle formation. Now it's not an A plus. I would give it a C because you have a swapping liquid 50 and you've got EMAs that could be better. Once the trade moves, it never breaks the eight until after it makes its high here at 174.90 and then 74.93. Those two highs create divergence on top, which if you were in this trade, it hadn't reached 2R yet. And this divergence, plus it being overbought, could be used to tell you to get out of the trade. So when we talk about taking a trade early and not seeing it all the way through to that 2R, that 3R that potentially could give you, when you're trading something with EMAs like this, I think very rarely you're going to get that 2 or 3 R. Plus, you have a swapping liquid 50. So if you're looking for 2 or 3 R, you want to be trading in trend setups, perfect trending setups, not something that could be better on EMAs and could be better on the TDI. So here, you're not looking for 3 R. You should be watching it and saying, okay, well now look, it's overbought. That's an exit signal. Oh, it's building divergence. Okay, we definitely should get out. Then it breaks the 21 with two or more candles right here and then falls. Notice here, it only breaks with one candle and comes right back up, giving you the potential to get out even at a higher price again. So if you're following the exit rules of overbought, then looking for divergence, then looking for EMA breaks, if you're using those rules, you're going to be able to manage trades like this that don't go full 2R. You're still going to be able to pull them for a profit. Here, Euro NZD, another counter trend idea, B set up here. EMAs are in a short term uptrend with the 800 EMA on top. TDI is long biased, L50 in the buy zone. So you're long biased trading to the 800. As you can see, it gives a little shift candle off the 50 off the 21 and off the 200 EMA. A 9 or 10 pip stop holds really well and it goes 108, oh, excuse me, 101 pips. It's 11R. Now this never breaks the 21 EMA all the way up through the 800 EMA. On the higher time frames, it was very long biased. So this type of move isn't unprecedented. Now on top of that, it gives you a second entry right here on this two candle formation. So if I go back a screen, look, there's your shift candle. Right here's your two candle marked up right here. Again, perfect L50, new high a day breakout off the 21 EMA for a two can. This is a bread and butter A1 two candle breakout for a new high of day. You would look to trade this to the 800 EMA. So for me, it probably wouldn't have enough risk reward in it because it wouldn't go 2R to the 800 for me to take the trade. So you would then see this huge move and say, oh my God, I left 88 pips out there. That's crazy. No, I didn't. I followed the rules and the rules told me that the risk reward to the 800 wasn't that great. Not every time it does this, it's going to go way through the 800 EMA. There will be times where it hits the 800 and maybe falls away or chops sideways. So it's important to keep the higher time frames in focus, but also here, 15 minute is long biased. You know the risk reward with the stop at the entry candle open price. You can take this trade if you like that risk reward to the 800 EMA. Here, we're going to go back to another example on CAD CHF. This one starts to pick into full trend. Here, we have a perfect liquid 50 in the buy zone. EMAs are coming into a downtrend. Short-term EMAs are falling under the 800. You get a shift candle here, 8 and 21 cross, off the 50 and off the 800 and off the 200. So coming through all the EMAs, it shifts. It's a good shift because the RSI comes through the L50 and through the trend line. 
that shift could get you in if you were awake at 3 a.m. It then pulls back, as all shift candles do, and retests that Asia low price, that consolidation price, 74.64, right there. After that retest and as it holds, this two candle formation off the 21 EMA, when the RSI comes through the L50 again, that to me would be a safer entry. The shift candle shows you the change in bias. The retest and the hold tells you you're, bet, you're in the right direction trading short here. The L50 told you to be short biased. The EMAs told you to be short biased. The only thing that could have been better here on that shift candle entry was if you were outside the Asian range. You see how you're still within the Asia pin high and pin low? So again, you're trading a pair CAD CHF that isn't really awake during the Asian session. It doesn't pick up until New York picks up. And that's why you see the move here happen once the New York session happens. 6, 7, 8 o'clock a.m. New York time. So again, shift candle and a two candle formation. And that's textbook A1. Shift, pullback, two candle or three candle off the 21 continuation of trend. With a perfect liquid 50 like this all day from the changeover of day, that tells you the direction you should be trying to trade it today, 100%. If you can't find EMAs that line up with the L50, go find a better trade. Get off that pair. This one's a huge move on Euro NZD. This is during the Asian session, and I wanted to mark this up because this is an NZD pair moving during the NZD session. And look at how this thing never touches the 21 EMA all day. Six, uh, 17 pip on the stop, it goes almost 9R, 146 pips all day. And look how oversold it gets, and it just keeps falling. Just unbelievable euro pressure back in the uh, early days of December. So here it's a shift candle off the 50 through the 21 EMA, 8 and 21 EMA cross, beautiful falling trend line, RSI coming through the L50, everything telling you that that's a short potential entry position. It breaks for another new low of day, pulls back, retests your entry price exactly, which is the significant breakout price, and then it falls away from that, holding the 8 EMA all day. This was a Friday, so this was an unreal move. Normally, you don't see this happen on a Friday, but it's during the Asian session. You've got perfect EMAs. 800 EMA was on top. L50 in the sell zone, so you know it's short biased, and it's a break off the 50. You know if it's coming off the 50 EMA, it's going to move well for you. And that's why in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4, we're going to talk about using divergence to take trades that aren't these formations, they're separate, but they're at an even better price off the 50 EMA. This is Euro AUD. So there's divergence on the bottom here from the previous day, which might tell you that it could rise. However, the L50 holds the sell zone basically all day. EMA's in a downtrend. It does have that L50 in the buy zone for a few minutes, but other than that, it's clearly short biased. Here, it breaks for a new low of day off the 21 EMA, previously touching the 50, and I love the trend line here. Look at that hooking trend line. RSI falls right through the L50, and this thing falls 47 pips, almost 2R for you here, and this is at 9.45 in the morning. So this is a day of drop, build some divergence. It might break and come higher. It can't. It tries to break the 50, gets back under it. Tries to break the 50 again, can't, gets back under it. Tries to break again, can't, breaks for a new low of day with a perfect L50 almost. That's a short signal. Now, it's not an A-plus short trade because that L50 is not perfect. It could be perfect, but it's not. So it's definitely a B setup, but it's still measurable risk reward with the stop at the entry candle open price there. 25 pips and you get almost 50 out of it. And look, it never breaks the 21 all the way down to 40, 50 pips. So here, this is Euro USD. A swapping liquid 50 and the EMAs could be better for sure. And that's why it's a B setup. But look at the four candle formation off the 21, headed for a new high of day. In a situation like this, if that fourth leg coming off the 21, that right leg does not break past that high, you know the next candle should. And if it doesn't, that would be a bad sign. But this one does, breaks for a new high. What does it do? Comes right back to your entry price because it's a significant level. It's a significant breakout because these are A1 trades. And then it ends up moving higher off that. You get 3R off this if you hold it. See, six pip stop and it goes about 20. There is an entry here later in the day. Again, look at that two candle formation that you could take as well. But for now, just look at that swap liquid 50 look at the emas how they could be better 50 could be above the 200 but it's not so when you read this it's a b setup it's not as perfect as it could be you could see this l50 in the buy zone here to start the day and it's not you could see the emas in an uptrend full uptrend and they're not so you have to keep that in mind but this is textbook as well look at the 8 and the 21 cross shift candle here pull back to the 21 move off of it level um, one pull back into level two pull back into level three that's it here, AUD CHF. Now, another slower pair because we have that CHF attached to it, but this was a three candle breakout that actually broke through divergence. So I wanted to show this to you so we can start wheeling some divergence into these A1 markups now. So you see the L50 falling overnight, coming into the cell zone, basically in the cell zone all day, except a couple hours right there, not even 45 minutes. 
So it's in the sell zone, you're short biased, EMAs are coming down, so you're short biased, but it builds divergence on the bottom. Now, again, if you don't know how I drew these two purple lines, we're going to learn in just a second here. But this three candle formation broke on price action and it broke on the RSI. So that breaks your divergence. It then retests divergence, respects that nine pip stop up at the top of that formation and falls away from it almost 4R. So for me, it's a B setup. Why? EMAs and L50 both could be better. Probably a C setup because there's divergence on the bottom, but it breaks the divergence and then confirms the break with the retest here. So it's breaks retests, and then it moves. And look, never breaks the 21 EMA. It actually only breaks the eight for one or two candles at most. So you get good R on this trade without a doubt. You're up three R and you're moving the stop loss. You're making good money on this trade. This is Euro USD back to that previous markup where I had the four candle formation marked up right here. Here's that two candle that I mentioned later in the day. So let's say you saw the four candle potential and you just didn't take it because of the EMAs not being perfect and the L50 being swapping. You could then come back to it a couple hours later, 1045 New York time and hit this two candle. Now it doesn't break for a new high of day, but what did I just say? The next candle better get you up and it does. And then that's where you're still getting almost two R out of this seven pip stop and it goes about 13 or 14. So this one to me is almost a better setup than that four candle initially. It's more of a confirmation move because you had your breakout here. This is a move off of that level that you would have been trading at here. So let's move into another one here. This is GBP CHF. Again, we're going to reference some more divergence as we're getting towards the end of chapter one. Notice the divergence the previous day, which tells us to be careful going long until that divergence is broken. This is a shift candle off the 50, breaking the Asian range. It's a shitty liquid 50, how it's falling towards that stationary 50, but it is a shift candle. It goes right to yesterday's high, the top of the divergence structure, and bounces and falls away from it all day. So this is why I grade this as C. You got divergence the previous day that you're trading into. You've got a falling liquid 50 basically at reset at the stationary 50. And you're trading for the first breakout of the Asian range, which is sometimes a breakout that we see get retested very quickly. So with all of those things in its way, the divergence, the rejection from yesterday's high, the falling liquid 50, and the Asian range not being opened up yet, all of those things would just keep me out of this trade by far. Yeah, it could break out and GBPs could move higher, but this divergence is more than enough. And this falling liquid 50 almost into the sell zone, it's more than enough to say, no, I'm not buying this right now. Definitely could be better. Here, this is a pretty nasty looking counter trend setup. You have this kind of three or four candle formation off the 50 EMA. Now the 800 EMA is below and you can see the L50 is falling and then into the sell in the buy zone and then breaks into the sell zone overnight. So it's not a clean L50. So this is definitely a C setup, but just notice price actions moving lower. L50 is telling you to sell it. You're selling it EMA to EMA at that point. It gets to the 200 breaks underneath, tries to continue lower, but it just can't. The reason for that is the higher time frames here are still long biased. So trading counter trend, even if the L50 tells you, you're going to use these EMAs. They're almost like walls in your way. And that's why counter trend trades, you're going to hear me say this over and over in the course, counter trend trades are very tough. They're less probable because you're trading towards these walls. The EMAs are your walls when you're trading counter trend. So it's a swapping L50, not clearly short biased because it starts the day in the buy zone. And the EMAs are long biased, not short biased. So this is definitely a C setup. But some people I remember were looking at this, they measured the stop and they actually made money on this if you were patient and held. But the risk reward is never going to be there in this because it's not a trending trade. You want trending trades, full trend. Like this one, L50 in the buy zone, breaking for new highs. It breaks past the initial high set here during the London session the previous day. So that's your level. Notice the pin, the pin, the test, the break and hold. That's where you take the entry because that's your two candle formation with the RSI in proper position. It's not overbought. There's no divergence on top. And that runs 5R for you. 40 pips with a seven or eight pip stop. Look, it breaks the 21 EMA once, guys. That exit rule is so clear. It works so well. One break of the 21, not with a strong bar, boom, it holds the 21 and keeps rising. Look at the L50. That tells you everything you need to know. Coming into the buy zone and rising. EMA is in an uptrend. That tells you the direction you should be trading this. Here, this is a good trade to reference for sure. EMA is coming into a downtrend. L50 in the sell zone all day. So you're short biased. This thing hit its low and oversold at about 5 a.m. It tried to then break past that low here at 745. This two candle formation could have gotten people short. However, the RSI did break through the L50, but didn't hold. The RSI was through, but the trend line was not falling. Look at that like rising, but flat almost trend line. If you're going short, you'd want to see this trend line falling. So 
the reason the RSI looks like it pulls back up through, and we've talked about this before, but the reason for that is because the next three candles were bullish. They pulled the RSI back up. That's why indicators are air quotes around lagging. No, this formation just wasn't a solid formation because the trend line was still rising. This has been in an uptrend since it hit oversold right here. And that's why price rose all day because it hit oversold and RSI crossed the trend line. Trend line's rising. So you have to pay attention to the trend line. You have to pay attention to your formation. And this is why I don't love these formations that don't break for a new low of day. Here is your shift, your push. It tries to test the 21 and come down and it can't. It could be because it's oversold. It could be because it doesn't break for a new low. Whatever it is, I would avoid this. Why? One, it's oversold. Two, the EMAs are not in a clear downtrend all day from the start of the day. So two knocks right there. Three, it's a Friday. So on top of that, Friday, we know we can see some crazy moves. This was Black Friday. So that might be why this thing reversed too. But there's already two knocks on it and the fact that it doesn't break for a new low and the fact that the trend line, so at least three knocks on it to say, turn away from this thing and find something else. That trend line is not good. You would much rather short something with a falling trend line like it is back here, not with a rising trend line like this. Here, this is Euro JPY back in November, right at 4 a.m. it breaks for a new high of day. And just look at how well, 2R, no problem. Holds the 8 EMA, holds the 21, just wait. It never breaks the 21, no exit signal, no divergence on top. The only thing that could be better about this would be that L50. You see how it comes down and it sits in the stationary 50 for a while? But then again, we break the Asian range, we get these price, we get price back into an uptrend and these EMAs start turning up. So that gives you the idea, okay, L50 is rising, EMAs are turning up, price is making higher lows. This is in an uptrend. And that's why this has the potential, at least, for a new breakout, for a new high of day, to give you some money. So I wanted to make sure we talked about this too. New high of day, off the 21, with pins to the 50, the 200, the 800, L50 is rising, RSI size in a proper position, not overbought, trend lines rising, L50 looks good. So here, 2R makes sense to me, especially being such a crappy setup on EMAs and TDI. You're very happy to take 2R out of this. So that wraps it up for chapter one. That is our A1 system review. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I gave you my contact information at the beginning. If there's any other questions, just drop a comment down below. I do check the comments here on the course. And now we're going to move into the first chapter about divergence. We're going to talk about defining it, identifying it, and what is it telling us.